can be uh, estimated at uh, 400, uh, 450 billion dollars, 450 billion dollars, which is a huge amount of, uh, of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on that, uh, we decided to gather a representative from our partners, private uh, companies, chief information security officers, chief uh, security officers, as well as top representatives from international organizations which are acting global, uh, worldwide, and uh, or, or regional. So we had representatives from Interpol, from Europol, from Eurojust, from several ministers of justice, for example, US Department of Justice. And we decided to speak together uh, about the question how to address the, the cyber crimes. And uh, the members of this group decided to follow the uh, the following methodology. First, uh, they decide to address the question of the threat assessment. And uh, interestingly, uh, they uh, rapidly came to the same result, to a common result. There are two main categories of, of cyber crimes. A uh, first category which uh, uh, has to do with the crimes which already existed before internet existed, like uh, theft, like corruption, like, like money laundering. Uh, and the second category uh, uh, comprised the types of crimes which are directly related to the use of internet. DDoS, for example, or Trojans, or other uh, 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 means which have been used and continue uh, to be used by the hacker in order to disturb uh, the communication. The, after having done that threat assessment and achieved the same results in terms of a, a, a description of the threats, the group decided to have a look at what has been done so far. The idea was to really have impact, not to reinvent the, the, the wheel, if you want. So we discussed with uh, several institutions, academics uh, and, and uh, uh, public institutions, the question what has been done worldwide so far uh, in the combat of, uh, against the crime, uh, what has been done on the regional level, and, and so on. And a reference document has been established, which is a describing the uh, initiatives uh, existing so far. Based on the threat assessment, common threat assessment, based on this reference document, uh, the group decided to discuss the uh, question, what are the common needs? What are the common needs from both for both or from both the uh, public sector, law enforcement, and the private sector. And rapidly, again, rapidly, the group came to a, a common result. The main needs, needs in that, in that uh, field have to do with the sharing of information. There is a huge lack so far on the global level, on the regional level, uh, uh, in the field of the sharing of information. And ladies and gentlemen, that has to do with the lack of trust. L uh, uh, lack in sharing of information has to do with the lack of trust. The companies don't trust uh, each other. There is a huge mistrust between uh, the states and the companies, between the public sector and the, and the company. So based on the uh, establishment of these uh, uh, common needs, the group decided to uh, list a couple of common measures, private public measures. So they decided to uh, uh, publish five recommendations, five recommendations for public-private partnership against cybercrime. And the goal, the main goal of these recommendations is to enhance the sharing of information between the private sector and the uh, public one by first establishing 
global information sharing platform on, on the world level, if you want, and it is what uh, Interpol is uh, doing now. Mr. Nakatani will explain to you uh, what has been done and what are the next steps in that field. And second, by establishing information sharing platforms on the regional level, especially in Africa. And therefore, our presentation today, the idea is to show to you that there is not only a need for information, a better information sharing uh, uh, against cybercrime on the global level, there is a need on the regional uh, level as well, following a very important principle which is true especially in the field of the combat of the crime, think global but also act local. A couple of words uh, uh, regarding the next step. These rec those recommendations have been uh, endorsed during the annual meeting in Davos uh, last, uh, last January. Now the idea is to enter the phase of the implementation of these recommendations. That means we will work, work together again with the private sector and the public one in order to establish a couple of guidance, the purpose of which will be to uh, have a, a picture of what has to be shared in terms of information and how the uh, participants have to share their information in order again to uh, be practical but in order again to establish or re-establish the trust which is so important in order to efficiently uh, f uh, fight the cyber, the cyber crime. Uh, we will promote the implementation of these recommendations on all regional, during the all uh, uh, regional even events we will uh, uh, run this year, especially in Asia, but in India uh, as well in order to create their uh, regional information uh, sharing platform as well. And we will address a couple of topics as well, which have to do with uh, the uh, question of the implementation of the existing uh, regulations in the field of the cybercrime, especially the uh, Budapest Convention. So uh, Max and uh, dear uh, colleagues, the in as, uh, introduction and uh, just to describe what has been done so far and uh, what the uh, initiative of the forum uh, in the field of the cybercrime uh, does mean. Um, I think we'd like to hear from, uh, from the public sector. So if Minister Kone, if you could um, outline some of your thoughts, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, uh, I'm afraid I will uh, make this uh, press conference longer because I will speak in French. And uh, Mr. Jean-Luc uh, Vez uh, will uh, translate. Thank you, Jean-Luc, for, for that. Welcome. Uh, ce, que, ce que je dois dire uh, pour commencer, c'est que nos pays uh, africains ont aussi besoin uh, d'avoir, uh, de créer la confiance avec les utilisateurs que de créer des réseaux. Donc euh, créer cette confiance est aussi importante que tout le reste de l'activité que nous menons aujourd'hui euh, à travers la construction de réseaux, à travers la facilitation de l'accès, à travers la production de contenu, etc. etc. Euh, donc euh, pour nous, les TIC sont perçus comme un véritable catalyseur, et, et chacun, chacun le sait ici, un véritable catalyseur du développement de nos pays. Les TIC sont au centre aujourd'hui de la vie de nos pays. Et nous sommes dans une vitesse qui est beaucoup plus importante en termes de progression relative que euh, beaucoup de pays européens. Donc euh, nous avons intérêt à avoir euh, un secteur du numérique qui soit euh, fiable, un secteur du numérique qui crée la confiance, un secteur du numérique euh, en, dans lequel les populations n'hésitent pas à, à, à aller, euh, dans lequel les populations n'hésitent pas à... à à, à exercer aussi bien dans l'éducation que dans la santé que dans la gouvernance de nos états etc etc euh, je, la deuxième chose que je dirais c'est peut-être euh, l'aspect spécifique euh, de, de, de la cybercriminalité pour euh, les pays africains et en particulier pour euh, mon pays la Côte d'Ivoire Stop here. Yes, uh, mi the mi Minister uh, Kone uh, uh, mentioned the, the fact that uh, 
the, the trust, the trust uh, I mentioned as well, uh, is in Africa too uh, one of the, the, the main aspects of the collaboration. And uh, it is uh, one of his goals to, uh, to develop this, this trust. There is no uh, uh, development of networks without trust. Uh, ITC are a, a chance, of course, for uh, everybody, for the African population in general, for every uh, state. But uh, uh, this uh, technology uh, is accompanied by, again, uh, 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 also by a, a dark aspects mm -hmm. which have to be uh, dealt with. And uh, it is a huge challenge for uh, every state to uh, to uh, to address uh, these these uh, these aspects, but uh, uh, the Ivory Coast and uh, Minister Kone is ready to uh, to accept this challenge as to, and to to go ahead. Mm. Uh, en Afrique uh, et principalement uh, en Côte d'Ivoire, uh, il faut savoir que <coughs> cette uh, cybercriminalité a principalement uh, un, un uh, une image, une image qui est celle euh, plutôt de petite escroquerie. Euh, la cybercriminalité, chacun en sait la définition, c'est par exemple l'intrusion dans un système euh, informatique, c'est par exemple répandre des spams dans des systèmes, c'est le vol de données, c'est la pédopornographie, etc. Euh, mais ce qu'on peut voir dans nos pays, dans nos pays euh, et en particulier en Côte d'Ivoire, c'est l'utilisation d'outils qui sont des outils de communication pour en réalité faire de la petite escroquerie. On le voit notamment dans le chantage sur l'héritage, on le voit par exemple dans ce qui s'appelle le Love Chat, où des personnes utilisent en réalité ces équipements-là uniquement dans le but d'en tromper d'autres. Donc l'outil lui-même n'est pas déterminant en réalité dans l'acte de cybercriminalité telle qu'il est relevé dans nos, dans nos environnements. It is interesting to note that uh, it seems that the image of the cybercrime in Africa uh, is rather related to the first category of crimes I just uh, described before. That means uh, with the crimes which already existed before a uh, internet uh, existed like for example a small bribery or uh, uh, the so-called uh, love chats and uh, internet is also used uh, just used as as a tool in order to commit uh, crimes which uh, uh, which uh, uh, exists uh, existed and still uh, exist with, without internet if you want a facilitator a kind of facilitator mm -hmm. Et les conséquences euh, n'en sont pas moindres puisque en ce qui concerne la Côte d'Ivoire, nous avions il y a quelques années euh, des, des effets qui étaient relativement euh, dévastateurs pour euh, l'image numérique de notre pays. Et nous avions euh, régulièrement des plaintes de, des sites de paiement, nous, avons, nous étions même blacklistés sur un grand nombre de sites d'achat, d'achat de commerce en ligne, de paiement en ligne. Euh, L'image de la Côte d'Ivoire était, était négative en matière de, de cybercriminalité euh, et nous avions malheureusement un grand nombre de jeunes gens euh, qui régulièrement euh, s'adonnaient à ce type d'activité et malheureusement se retrouvaient euh, évidemment pris euh, en infraction et se retrouvaient souvent en prison. Donc euh, nous avions l'obligation évidemment euh, de mettre un coup d'arrêt et d'apporter des solutions qui permettent d'éradiquer complètement ce fléau de la cybercriminalité dans notre pays. The Ivory Coast uh, was in a certain sense obliged to do something because the in, in the end the image of, of the country uh, has uh, terribly suffered from these uh, use of internet to commit uh, to commit crime. So there was a need from from the political side to do something and uh, it has been decided to act in, in, in order to eradicate uh, this, this type of, of, of crime. Uh, to, be note, uh, to be noted the fact that uh, uh, young people, very young people, were uh, normally involved by the committing of these, uh, these crimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I will come later on uh, the solutions we've uh, 
we've uh, used in Côte d'Ivoire yeah. to fix uh, yeah. this problem. Exactly, yeah, we, can have, we can have questions on that. Okay. Um, uh, mm. I think we'd like to hear from the perspective mm. of, uh, of law enforcement, Mr. Mr. Noburu mm. Nakatani. No, thank you. Uh, mm. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. I'm happy to be here to discuss and further develop the uh, 2016 uh, Davos recommendations for the public-private uh, public partnership uh, against the cybercrime, which was uh, outlined by Jean Mr. Jean Luc Bates. In fact, and the collaboration uh, with private sector and academia, uh, leveraging their technology and, and expertise, is at the heart of the Interpol strategy to combat cybercrime. As you know, cybercrime is becoming increasingly organized, sophisticated, and industrialized, and produces a high profit with a low risk of arrest. So cybercrime has obviously become an attractive business model for the criminals worldwide. The challenge we have, or that we are facing, is that law enforcement is a currently the closed system based on nation states. While the threat we are facing, cybercrime, is global. So policing inher inherently does not scale globally across national borders. Surely it doesn't uh, the scale in cyberspace either. On the top of that, the power has been shifting from the nation state to the non-state actor, private sector. If you see the, uh, the encryption case between the API, Apple, it represents the current situation. So this is very challenging uh, situation in which law enforcement must operate in order to identify and arrest criminals. Uh, this is why there is a crucial role for Interpol to play as global facilitator to address cybercrime. Given this situation, the uh, Interpol Global Complex for Innovation was uh, created last April 2015 as one-stop shop to assist our member country to combat cybercrime. So our response must be con uh, coordinated, multilateral, and global. So multi-stakeholder approach is the most effective way to combat cybercrime. Let me give you one example of how Interpol works with private companies. The currently 10 experts from the private companies are working with our staff, Interpol staff, in the IGCI. On the daily basis, they provide us with the analytical support on the specific cyber threat and work on the specific uh, the police research project. So working together is the easiest way to build the trust. So actually, the the private sector has their own business culture, and law enforcement has another one. So knowing each other is a first step to build the trust. Um, actually, the, one of the, uh, the outcomes uh, from that is that Interpol actually developed the training modules on the dark net for law enforcement, together with Netherlands-based research institute, a TNO, uh, some of you may know that, and they jointly delivered the training on the dark net in the last year. So we are also uh, in, the, in the process of the, uh, getting the support from the uh, telecommunication industry. Actually, BT is one of them, and our colleague is next to us, next to me. So this is how we develop the public-private partnership based on the mutual trust. Well, I just mentioned a few, but actually there are more. Uh, I'd like to highlight again that multi-stakeholder approach Actually, solidarity of the good people is now most needed to effectively counter unprecedented challenges posed by criminals in the cyberspace. The internet cyberspace is actually more unsafe than we think. So much need to be done now and together. And the Interpol is committed to enhance information sharing between law enforcement and private sector as through the Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore uh, because that is designed at the DNA level to work together with private companies to address cybercrime. Thank you. And Larry Stone, our voice from the private sector. Well, thank you very much. Um, good to be here, and thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, we wholeheartedly uh, endorse the report. Um, as a company, we're a telecoms company uh, headquartered in the UK, but we operate in 170 countries, and one of our growth businesses is working with companies on and others on cyber security. Our, our practice in that area grew 24% in the last uh, year. So we think that sort of information is not power. People think information is power. We think information sharing in this context is power. I'll make two points, uh, really, if I may. One is 
to underscore uh, what a growing threat uh, this is. Um, we've seen a thousand percent uh, increase in attacks on our network in the last 18 months. Uh, four years ago at the Olympics, we were having uh, malicious attacks at 11,000 per second. Uh, on the Olympic sites we were running, and that'll obviously only get bigger for Tokyo 20, uh, for the next uh, Olympics, obviously. Uh, and that spans across a range of things we do, antivirus, parental controls, managed security solutions, ethical hacking. Um, we think businesses are starting to take notice, but only perhaps some of the bigger businesses. Um, we surveyed a uh, 100 uh, boards uh, uh, with KPMG recently, and I think about 73% of them said they were talking about cybersecurity quarterly, which is good. So we need more partnering, I think, during a time of uh, enhanced interconnectivity. There's a lot of issues about connectivity in Africa, but it's growing very fast uh, all around the world, and also about moving to the fourth industrial revolution internet of uh, things. So it's something of a patchwork uh, in terms of collaboration, and I endorse uh, what's been said already um, about uh, how we might move forward on that. Let me take one, one recent uh, African example uh, three months ago. Um, through Hacktivists Anonymous in uh, Operation uh, Africa, where there was a, a tax under an anti-corruption label against a number of, of governments, and we think about sort of 75 or so websites were impacted or taken down. So there's a there's a, um, a both a national and a, a pan-African impact there. I think the second thing I just mentioned, which I think has been touched on before, is around skills, um, because to ad address this issue. Uh, we need uh, a focus on STEM skills, we need a focus on tech literacy and digital skills, and we need a focus on coding in schools. Um, we have about 2,500 people working on the security area in the company, and we announced recently we wanted to recruit another 900 around the world, but there's a real um, uh, good competition for resource, but not enough resource in the overall pot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'd like to hear questions from the, from the floor. Do we have any? Yes, sir. Can we get the microphone here? And I think we have a, another one just after as well. Could you say your name and organization okay. and who your question is addressed to as well? Okay. I'm Thank called you. Moses Gahiji and I write for the East African and quotes. Uh, my question goes to everyone on the panel. Uh, why you've mentioned that uh, there's been mistrust between the private sector and the public sector. Why is, it, why is, why is this happening? Why does the private sector not trust the, the public sector. In your view, I think you, uh, good enough, you've done some researches and you've you know, uh, gone uh, extra miles in understanding this. And then the other question is, yeah, you mentioned uh, three months ago when uh, you know, some governments were attacked and, uh, you know, and some information was released. But um, the public sometimes finds doesn't trust some of their governments, and they, they, be, be, they believe that by these attacks, by this uh, this information coming out uh, on the internet, they get to understand what happens behind the the closed door. They get to understand some of the the they, they believe that their government sometimes you know uh, steal or hide away some of the money that they're supposed to enjoy in the in the economy. So, um, is this an issue you've also noticed? in your researches, thank you. Thank you, um, so a question there on, uh, on motivations but also on mistrust between public and private sector. And I think we also had a question, did we? Okay. Um, if, if we can, I'm Lucas Liganga from The Guardian in Tanzania. Mine was just a request, if we can get the recommendations. Okay, we we will do that. Okay, I think I think first if we um, if we go to John John Luc Vey. It is a very big question. A uh, why the mistrust? As you know, uh, it, trust is a, is a something which is very difficult to achieve, and uh, which is very easy to lose. And um, I, I think if you have a look at the recent history, especially uh, the affair Snowden, uh, you have to accept that uh, there are a couple of issues which uh, uh, can only lead to mistrust. Um, the problem I have uh, personally realized 
is the fact that uh, between the companies, that means mistrust, mistrust between the, uh, the uh, companies, uh, if, if, if you are running a bank, hmm, and if you have been hacked on a large scale, hacked like, like uh, you, you, US banks have been hacked in the, the latest uh, years, uh, it is not necessarily in your interest to share your experiences with uh, other companies. Hmm? And if you don't share your experiences with other companies, you don't uh, further the trust between the other companies. If you are addressing now the question of mistrust between the companies and the states, I think uh, we have to accept that a couple of states are acting uh, and observing uh, their own uh, citizens. So it is creating a situation of, of mistrust. And, and what I realized as well is that for the, the private sector, especially for the citizen, uh, it is quite difficult to make the difference between the national security needs, which could <coughs> allow uh, in a certain circumstances could allow an observation and, and in other circumstances not allow and uh, the needs from the law enforcement you know law enforcement are acting only to protect the citizens so the law enforcement have really have to, uh, to have uh, the possibility to observe in order to combat the criminals, which are in fact using uh, the ICT in order to commit the, the crimes, so it is there. It is difficult for the citizen to make the difference between the needs of the national securities, uh, uh, security and the law enforcement needs. And uh, therefore, from my point of view, the huge debate around, for example, the the case, uh, the case uh, Apple versus uh, FBI. Um. Can we hear from Interpol? Okay, thank you so much. With regard to maybe, the uh, lack of the... And then maybe the Mr. Stone afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank With you. regard to the lack of the uh, trust between the public sector, or law enforcement and um, private industry, uh, I think that we need to uh, step back a little bit and then put it into the perspective. Then in fact, the, the ultimate goal of the law enforcement is to bring criminals into justice. The private sector's ultimate goal is to make a profit. So actually, the, both the goals are different. However, the private companies have social, co corporate social uh, responsibility. So they understand they need to, uh, to cooperate with law enforcement. So actually, there is a certain actually, degree of trust between two, uh, two sectors, let's say. However, that trust is based on the personal relationship. So I know you, then I trust you, so I share information with you, but not somebody else. So actually, the challenge we have is that that personal trust uh, between the industry or between the government and the industry need to be actually institutionalized. But this process is very challenging because we are human being, and then that's the, actually the personally trustful relationship is not easy to be institutionalized. So how can we better address that issue? So actually, we need institutional mechanism to pass information oh, at certain point. But once again, the, we are now building it from the personal level. So actually, it takes time. But up to certain point, we really need to uh, uh, put it into the, some framework. So I think that the, this requires both sides the understanding about each other. So I think that, that that's my point. And um, also that the private companies also is very concerned about rep reputation if they are related to the cyber, uh, cyber attacks resulting in the leakage of the personal information, etc. Mm. So that is uh, another uh, concern which we need to take into consideration. Thank you. And then, and then Mr. Mr. Stone? Yeah, hi, just um, three things. I think um, obviously with the focus here is on crime. There's obviously a, a huge hinterland about personal privacy and sometimes the issues can get uh, confused or sometimes overlap. So, um, and, and that's very variable. Uh, uh, in terms of laws per country. I think the second thing which I uh, endorse what Mr. N uh, Nakatani said is um, uh, that 
the, the issue that's following is, is an instant institutional framework for effective information sharing which will allow people to feel uh, comfortable uh, and credible. And, and part of the background to that is, is very variable laws and policies in, in many different parts of the world. For example, uh, just in Europe, um, uh, telcos have traditionally had uh, requirements in terms of security of platforms and reporting and monitoring and uh, disclosure to their uh, agencies. But that's not been the case, say, for the energy industry or for other critical national infrastructure like financial services. So I think that's one area that Europe, for example, is trying to address. And perhaps the third thing, which is just, to some extent, the scale of the issue is so huge, it can be a bit over, overall, it can be uh, to almost awesome uh, in, in terms of its uh, scale. So I think the, the, the value of these recommendations is to put in place a, a structure for, for people to feel comfortable uh, with, uh, with addressing these things on a global scale. Thank you. Um, I think uh, to the Minister, I, mean, I understand you also wanted to add some comments on the, uh, the value of the recommendations. I think. Euh, oui, bon, d'accord. Sur, sur, sur l'aspect confiance, euh, je, je, je dirais qu'il y a, qu a peut-être une attente qui est, qui est, qui est très forte du, du secteur privé vis-à-vis -vis du secteur public. Euh, et cette attente vient, vient du fait que c'est le secteur public qui, euh, qui définit les lois. C'est le secteur public qui réglemente le, 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 le secteur des, des TIC. C'est le secteur public qui... Euh, euh, a en principe la force pour poursuivre par exemple les, les infractions ou les personnes qui sont en, qui sont en, en délit. Et donc euh, évidemment le secteur public n'est pas toujours outillé pour faire ce travail correctement. Et ça c'est peut-être l'autre aspect qui affaiblit euh, la, et qui crée la méfiance entre secteur public et secteur privé parce que le secteur privé, de mon point de vue, est souvent beaucoup plus en avance que le secteur public euh, est plus compétent que le secteur public et plus utilisateur en général que le secteur public également de ces, de ces technologies. Et puis il y a évidemment les impératifs de sécurité et qui font que les États, euh, dans la majorité des cas, ont besoin, ont besoin d'utiliser euh, donc ces réseaux pour, euh, pour euh, euh, les usages que, que nous savons tous. Et euh, malheureusement, cela crée effectivement des, des, des frictions avec, euh, avec, euh, avec le secteur privé, que ce soit les particuliers ou que ce soit les entreprises, euh, etc. Maintenant, pour revenir euh, aux, aux recommandations, nous, ce que nous avons fait en Côte d'Ivoire, c'est plusieurs niveaux de recommandations, plusieurs niveaux de, de mesures. Le premier niveau de mesure, c'est ce le cadre juridique et réglementaire. Donc, euh, nous avons pris des lois, des lois qui euh, traitent de la cybercriminalité et des lois qui imposent justement au niveau... Euh, Peut-être qu'il faut que... Bon, according to uh, the Minister Kone, mm. uh, or his point of view is that there are huge expectations from the private sector towards the public one. And uh, the challenge the public sector is confronted with has to do with the fact that he is the regulator, the natural regulator. Mm. And, and uh, the challenge has to do with the fact that uh, everything which has to do with Internet has to do with the speed. Mm. And the actual regulation processes are not able anymore mm. to... Uh, to uh, find regulations mm. uh, in accordance with these speed issue. Mm. Uh, and uh, the private sector needs uh, re new regulations and uh, I think it is uh, something that uh, the recommendations are uh, furthering. The fact that uh, there is a need for a better collaboration private public in order to find new ways of collaborations uh, as substitute, if you want, in a certain sense, to the normal natural uh, regulation uh, processes. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I, I, we have to. We have to finish. Ben. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have to. Okay. I, I'll try. I'll try to 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 say, to say that in in English. Uh, so so the we have uh, a different level of uh, of uh, in uh, in our. Uh, uh, fighting of on of uh, uh, cyber, cyber crime. The the first level for for us is the regul the regulatory uh, frame. Uh, you have to have good laws. Uh, most of African countries don't have uh, clear law, uh, 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 actual uh, don't, uh, actual laws 
uh, love taking in, in, into account the uh, speed uh, and the evolution of uh, cyber crimes. Uh, so this is the, the first thing to do. Uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, we have uh, such, uh, such law now, uh, and we have uh, also a law uh, uh, fighting against uh, uh, the old uh, uh, a law, uh, 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 a law um, uh, promoting the, the protection of, uh, of networks uh, and systems, uh, which uh, puts uh, commitments on uh, government and on, uh, on the private sector. Uh, this is the first thing. The uh, second thing is uh, all the environment you have to create. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, a, a, a CI cert, a cert like uh, uh, many countries in, uh, in the world, but we have uh, created a, a platform uh, uh, to fight against cyber, uh, cyber uh, 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 crimes. A platform which uh, uh, have uh, uh, technicians in, uh, in uh, digital uh, and which uh, have uh, also uh, 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 specialists in, uh, in security. Uh, from uh, uh, from uh, the minister of uh, of security, uh, and then we we have uh, we have created uh, links between this uh, platform and uh, the 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 banks, uh, the uh, um, maisons de de transfert d'argent. Money transmitters. Uh, uh, money, transmit money transmitters. Uh, we we have created this uh, this link because uh, all the the uh, the most of the uh, cyber crimes have uh, the end in these uh, money transmitters. Uh, so uh, we have uh, now the uh, uh, permanent information on what uh, uh, people uh, are doing. Uh, and uh, when uh, an a transaction is uh, suspected, we, we try to, to know about it, and we can go uh, to uh, 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 the cyber criminal. And the, 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 first thing, the, the last thing, I think, is to be very, very uh, uh, rigorous and uh, severe in the uh, la, 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 of the infractions. Et, et en ce sens, en Côte d'Ivoire, en Côte d'Ivoire, nous avons des, 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 des textes aujourd'hui qui euh, sanctionnent très fortement euh, les actes de cybercriminalité. We have uh, uh, 20, uh, nous avons des peines jusqu'à 20 ans uh, de, de prison. Nous avons des peines uh, uh, pécuniaires uh, qui vont jusqu'à 100 millions de francs CFA, ce qui représente beaucoup d'argent. Uh, 100 millions de francs CFA au-delà du préjudice qui est subi par, uh, par autrui. Et puis, euh, le dernier aspect sur lequel je pense qu'il est euh, important quand même d'insister, c'est l'aspect sensibilisation. Euh, beaucoup de nos pays, beaucoup de nos jeunes s'adonnent à cette activité parce qu'ils ne sont pas suffisamment sensibilisés euh, sur, euh, euh, premièrement, les mesures qui sont prises par le gouvernement. Ils ne sont pas suffisamment sensibilisés sur les peines qu'ils encourent en cas de problème. Et ils ne sont pas suffisamment sensibilisés sur euh, la, les risques qu'ils prennent euh, quand euh, ils s'adonnent à ce type d'actes. Donc euh, nos pays ont besoin de, euh, de sensibiliser, de former les jeunes euh, et de faire en sorte qu'il euh, y ait euh, de moins en moins, évidemment, d'actes de, de cybercriminalité. Donc euh, je vais m'arrêter là, euh, compte tenu du peu de temps que nous avons. Je vous remercie. So maybe two sentences to summarize what the, the minister said. The Ivory Coast uh, not only intends to develop uh, preventi uh, pre pre uh, measures in terms of prevention, uh, but also to develop the repression uh, by uh, developing the courts of, uh, of the pains. And, and, the, and the, uh, the but the idea is not only to develop the penal code, but also to enhance the uh, awareness of the, the population of the, 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 the citizen. Mm. So uh, it is interesting to see that uh, Ivory Coast is uh, developing a, a whole uh, set of measures uh, of uh, preventive nature, repressive nature, and, and uh, sensibilization in order to better combat the cybercrime. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.